Shake. Okay. Other hand. There you go. Good boy. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Linux for Everyone, and welcome home. Uh, this video is part of an ongoing series that's dedicated to setting the record straight about certain Linux myths and misconceptions. Because a lot of what you've heard about Linux over the years, it might have been true back then, but it's probably not true anymore. So I'm talking about stuff like installing Linux is hard. Uh, there's no popular software for Linux. There's no games on Linux. And you have to use the command line for everything. Why? No, no, no. <laughs> We're just going to roll with it. <laughs> We're just going to roll with it. Today, I'm tackling uh, something that my friend Nick at the Linux Experiment brought up on Twitter. And that is uh, this, this notion that installing software on Linux is, is really difficult and challenging. Okay, I'll just drop the spoiler up front. The vast majority of the time, installing software on Linux is actually easier than what we're used to on Windows. Windows 11 is shaping up to, uh, to finally make installing popular software look and feel a little bit less archaic. So let me show you how awesome things have become on the Linux side of the fence. Before we get into it, I just want to thank Tuxedo Computers for making this video possible. If you're shopping for an AMD Ryzen-powered Linux laptop with insanely good battery life, check out the Pulse 15 over at TuxedoComputers.com. So when I switched to Linux a few years ago, I was really surprised to see the variety of popular software actually available and how simple it was to install. Coming from Windows, I was used to the standard process of going to the software's website, downloading the installer, stepping through the license agreement, hitting next a bunch of times, and then having to update most of that software separately. Almost everything I use on my Pop! OS installation is an effortless one-click install from the built-in app store. And all the software is updated seamlessly alongside system updates. That's awesome. I love that I can hop over to a different Linux distribution that I'm testing and install all of those same apps at lightning speed. I'm up and running in minutes. And once I figured out expert mode, that's the command line, which is actually easier sometimes, I installed all of that software with a single short command, all in one batch. These are apps a lot of you probably use on a daily basis. Steam, Slack, Zoom, Discord, Spotify, Telegram, even Microsoft Teams, maybe even Microsoft Edge, plus some fancy production software like Caden Live for video editing and a slick digital audio workstation called Bitwig. And if they're not available in your Linux distribution's app store, you'll probably find packages called DEBs or RPMs that are also quick and easy installs. Just download it, open it, hit install, and enter your password. One of the big reasons Linux has seen this surge of great software is the growing popularity of universal package formats like Snap and Flatpak. These are containerized, meaning the software developers, they only have to build one version of an app for it to work across dozens of Linux distributions. Have you ever heard the phrase dependency hell? Well, Snaps and Flatpaks make that a thing of the past. Now, that doesn't mean that every Linux app on the planet is going to work perfectly, but I cannot begin to tell you what a massive leap forward this has been. From gaming to photography to professional content production, there is an abundance of terrific software, not Adobe though, that's super simple to get up and running. Many major Linux distributions like Manjaro, Ubuntu, Elementary OS, and Fedora are now including Snaps or Flatpak support out of the box, baked right into their respective software stores. If you want to learn more about these, I'll include some helpful links in the description for this video. These days, Linux is even working miracles when it comes to running software and games that are exclusive to Windows, but I think we'll save that for a separate myth-busting video. So if you're thinking about using Linux, I hope this video erased at least one of your fears. If it did help, if you enjoyed it, leave a like, and if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. I'll be back soon, uh, possibly with Slayer.
<laughs> to bust some more Linux myths. Until the next video, you guys take care and take care of each other. Bye. Good boy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.